Shame, ladies and gentlemen. Shame, avarice, laziness, stupidity, boundless, lack of character. These are some of the terms which spring to my mind as I am considering these two so-called books which constitute the subject of today's review. They are allegedly written by some Marcin Adelbert and some Joe Lasbury. The type of name a spammer would come up with or the type of name that you would ask a bot to pick in order to give you some sort of European sounding names. But maybe start a little bit from the beginning. I was curious, aren't there any new Lisp books being written? Like, why so silent? Given that Lisp perchance did not conquer the popular fancies, but nonetheless remained a very important academic tool. And to my delight, I discovered a very recent book, Mastering Common Lisp. And then, looking further, I discovered another book, Mastering Lisp. What a weird coincidence that the names are so similar, isn't it? And then I realized what these two abominations truly constitute. They are, for all intents and purposes, and in my sincere evaluation, nothing but AI puke vomit of some text generation system which is soiling the book market with its productions of fanciless and superficial nature partly wrong but trying to remain as shallow as possible so as not to truly be wrong like for instance when it is talking about data types how it doesn't really like to go into into the finer distinctions within Lisp and really tries to stay in on the surface, such as telling that these things here are components of S expressions and so on and so forth. You realize one noteworthy thing right away, both books lack page numbers. Who makes a book without page numbers? This is ridiculous. But when you think about it more carefully, of course, as you're copying the AI vomit, you are not actually having a nice textbook. It's all just one long production of text, right? And this is the older book, the original, and that would be the plagiate. In legal terms, I'm not sure that either epithet can be given, as intellectual property demands a hate of creation, certain effort that has achieved a certain level, and only therefore is your copyright in some form protected. Neither of these works, in my honest opinion, constitutes anything that would fulfill this limit. The limit is somewhat higher in Central Europe, in particular like in Germany and Austria, somewhat lower in the United States, but Purely AI-generated content likely fulfills neither limit. And looking at the older code, uh, the older book, who does that? Why is it written here, Lisp copy code? Who would do that? That's a weird thing, isn't it? But if you're copying from the text generation system, maybe somewhere you'll just come across the copy moniker and yeah it will just pass along looking at this one here there is also a good giveaway and towards the end that this is completely ai written look at this css code and rust code and c sharp code of course without any code because this is some sort of link or something and Whoever copied it, just copied it. He, you know, you, you see it's underlined, like a link would be underlined. But didn't care to, in any fashion, adjust it for, for the book. Like, this is such primitive work. It is 
really incomprehensible. I am a little bit shocked that Amazon apparently prints everything and has no protection against such publications. I do hope they will institute some though, because if they do not, I mean today Lisp, tomorrow Rust, C, C++, Java, the market will be swamped with a multitude of AI vomit creations, which are taking apparently just seconds to create. You slam on them some form of cool looking title page. And content wise, the thing is so, so worthless, it, it's hard to grasp. What is actually fancy for, from my perspective though, is that the AI does not seem to be very, very creative. It looks as if it is following certain function points. And if you as a human critically look through it, you might even be able to discover some. Look here, I have made such A something, A, 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 B, here we are at A, F markers, which are denoting places where the examples are way too similar. Why would you make examples of exactly the number 42 and the number pi in both books? The AI is just not even all that creative in creating things. The hello world, okay, I, I sort of would even forgive that. But even the same way, you know, some some people are doing at least some variation of this. No, no variation here. And then you're having the symbols here as my symbol and here as my variable. Yeah, that is exactly what some sort of bot would come up with, right? Because in genuine list books, you sometimes find examples like Apple or something like that. Not here. The guidance through Lisp itself, if you're curious, like did the AI do this very well? It did not. The truth is, the AI started with the weirdest things. It called some things incorrectly. For instance, Lisp Works was named to be an integrated development environment. It's much more than that. It's actually one of the most respected Lisp Lisps itself and yeah it's full of such things which are being repeated all over and it starts I just have to see in which of the two books it was as it is hard to take them apart it starts explaining to you symbols um, atoms not with the symbol which is the classical thing but with something else and that is that looked very AI like a uh, human would not do that it was also starting to explain functions in the strangest fashion. Yeah, here, Lisp works to be an integrated development environment. It repeats that nonsense. It is talking several times about Emacs with slime and so on and so forth. Anytime it is writing code, you're having here this Lisp copy code or Lisp code. Here you're having it Lisp code. It is writing where, where it is giving you ideas how to install things, bash code, that's also quite a giveaway. So I don't really want to get much into the contents of these. Here you have the bash code. It's like bash in the creator of this thing. It's just, I'm appalled that this is starting to appear on the market. And while these are clumsy and clumsy and obvious miscreations, I am a little bit afraid that better copies will begin to appear. And that it will not be perchance all that easy in the future to to distinguish that and the peril lies in the lack of creativity, the loss of thought and of engagement when writing a Lisp book. The rest of this one, for instance, 
from chapter 10 onwards, quite a piece. I can't tell you which page because it doesn't have page numbers. It's just fluff talk, advanced topics, blah, blah, multi-threaded, variable serialization, not a single piece of code or of mental exercise, just the counting up of trash compiler optimizations. Learn how to use compiler optimization settings like inlining safety levels and speed levels to tailor code performance. Thank you for nothing, really. Here you're having parallelism and multi-threading, but you mentioned before that Bordeaux threads because you make no differentiation for you. These are just fragments of text, you stupid machine. I am sorry if I have gone on on a, on a rant, but I am genuinely afraid looking at these two very worthless creations that they will not be the last ones. And that we will be facing further unengaged works which will become more and more difficult to distinguish from intelligent creations by the casual observer. This, by the way, is one also fun funny example. Basic syntax and data types, but it doesn't actually have a section on data types. It's just talking on about things in an incredible spacing just in order to generate fatness, but it does not actually tell things in, in the logical fashion that you would have come to love in all the list books, even as each author followed his or her own path. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the sincere warning. Beware what books in the future you choose to trust. With this, I shall very much consider whether to heat the flat with these. We do have an oven here, you know. I might engage in some good old-fashioned book burning, <laughs> like in the Middle Ages. I am wishing you a pleasant evening. Thank you very much for having joined today. If you're not a subscriber yet, please consider it. In the future, I am planning, of course, to review worthier creations. It will be hard to find less worthy ones, too. And with that, see you soon. And goodbye.